Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV. Try us free. taken multiple trips to get into the location that we're at. New country, just unbelievably beautiful terrain. We know this is gonna be a big push. You know, getting in here was no small task. Uh, we had to build a bit of a strip to, you know, move some rocks and get some objective danger out of the way so I could, you know, get the whole team in. But now we're here, boots are on the ground and I couldn't be more excited to get this season started. as remote as we are and on the top of this mountain it's not normally where you want to park your plane for 10 days but the options are limited in order to get to the country that we want to get to so we've got to do everything we can do to make sure that it stays in one place because these things they don't like the ground they like to be in the air and when the wind blows that's what's going to want to do so you got to do everything to <laughs> to keep it from doing that less than easy but I have a feeling that's gonna be the theme of this hunt. Less than easy. Anchoring your plane down up here is obviously requires a few tools and maybe I should have brought a hammer, but the rocks will do. I got three eight inch rebar and seems to be strong enough. It'll be uh, good. 30th of July. Two days before season opener, we got a lot of miles to cover and we're gonna do it with a smile on because sheep season is right around the corner. On this trip, we have a big push to get to the mountain block that we wanna hunt. So it's about somewhere around 20 kilometers and the one thing you gotta do is root finding is huge to save as much energy as you possibly can. I don't just switch my brain off and go straight line at anything. It's always constantly looking for the most open terrain or you know, maybe it's less bog, whatever it is. You just gotta be always thinking about how to maximize the efficiency in every scenario. So one of the things I have to look at right now is we've got a big block of timber right in front of us. We wanna kinda of get up to the top of this knob here where it's open country and then we'll continue to head along. So after coming off the top of the mountain, leaving the plane, we've had to drop down into tree line. We've lost about 1,200 feet of elevation down into the creek bottom. Now we have to go back up before we can start navigating again, really. So you have to get all the information that you're gonna need for hours from the top of the mountain before you drop down into the drainage. Otherwise, you really just don't know which direction you need to travel. So. Now that we probably have another, whatever, 1,200 feet to get back up into Alpine again, or above Alpine, and above the trees, and then we'll be able to really start to root find again. So now it's just kind of head down and upward. Almost to the top of the ridge. Whenever I know that I've got a big push, 
or some long distance to make, I always chunk it up. I never focus on you know the total distance that I have to get to. I always look at, okay, what's the next mile or the next small goal? And this hilltop behind me is really my first goal as far as the whole journey goes. And that's how you have to do it. And then once you get there, choose a new one. You know, just keep moving forward and eventually you tick off the hours and the miles and you're where you need to go. Little mind trick that I love to play on myself. It works for me. So we took uh, the first chunk out of the way, the airplanes back up there on that flat hill and we're going this way. Five uh, more chunks to go. That's what I'm gonna break this one into. Homemade sandwiches. I think we'll have some trouble with water up here. It's been a pretty steady go to this point, a uh, few breaks, but now as we drop off this ridge, we got about three miles of bush bashing we got to get up on that plateau because the farthest mountain that you can possibly see, we are one mountain beyond that to where we really want to start hunting. Now, as soon as we get up on the plateau, we can really start to pull the glasses out and take a good look. But right now we're trying to travel and it's still a long way away. Greg McHale's Wild Yukon is brought to you by Really Right Stuff, mission critical support. Gunworks, 1,000 yards out of the box. Air Armor Tech, mission critical protection for perilous environments. Drop. Hogue Knives, purpose driven, precision built knives, proudly made in the USA. It's been uh, a legit bush bash. Um, we're, I think we're almost out of it. All we gotta do is get to the top of that and the trees for the most part are behind us. So the route to come through the bush, drop down low, I think was a good one. The other option was, you know, hook way out and around, um, big steep climb. And this one is certainly a more gentle climb but obviously a lot more bush. We could have done a little bit better on the route finding. When you look back at the route you came in, you're always checking over your shoulder to make sure you know what the best route possibly out is. So we could have uh, made one move that was better, but other than that, I think uh, it was a good decision. It's always awesome to break the alpine, get out of that bush bashing, and get the glasses on. We are now in sheep country. So we started right over there and we've made our way through the bush. It's about just over seven kilometers straight line. So that's been up and down and got a lot of elevation and we lost a lot. So it's seven o'clock now and that's about the time when the sheep really start to move and start to feed. I'm watching a ewe right now. She's just moving around and doing exactly that. So over the next few hours, we just got to keep our heads up and not to bump a whole pile of sheep. It's pretty exciting. And we're still a day and a half away from opening. So that basin up there is just full of ewes and lambs. I can see 12, but that many walked over the ridge. It's like the perfect time of night. Everything is just moving around, feeding. Yeah. 
Now's the time to be on the glass for sure. That's pretty cool. That's super cool. Sitting on the ridge, just glassing, and Dave spots this bear just, you know, 60 yards away from us. And he must have caught wind or heard our voices and then decided to, that this was not where he wanted to be. And generally speaking, up in the Alpine like this, up high, I haven't seen a lot of black bears. This is more unique than anything because generally speaking, this kind of country is grizzly bear country. But, so it's kind of neat to, to see a black bear. That bear's still there on the edge of the bush, eh? Almost halfway. It's been just a phenomenal day. A hard, hard push. And that's no joke. It's, uh, I think about, I don't know, 12 hours or so. This is a bit of an oasis. We are now in the mountains that we want to start hunting. And we're still a day ahead of the season. <laughs> and we found the first really flat <laughs> piece of ground that we've covered in the last you know, 12 hours. So <laughs> take advantage of it. Don't walk past it. And try to get ourselves a good night's sleep tonight. Get up bright and early in the morning, put the packs back on and move a little bit further. Up here, you know, in the Yukon, it's after 10 o'clock now, probably 10.30 or so. The daylight is pretty much all night and looking forward to getting up early tomorrow morning and putting the packs back on and moving a little bit further. Last night we went to bed around midnight and woke up with the sunrise. So as soon as I got out of the tent this morning, glassed around a little bit. I don't see any sheep. I don't see the ewes and lambs from last evening. Slept well last night other than the fact that I woke up thinking about sheep and thinking about direction of travel for today. And now it's just a matter of being meticulous and just slowing things down, really picking everything apart, see if we can't turn up some sheep. And I think that we're just gonna keep putting on some miles and just pick this place apart and see if we can't turn something up. This might be the last place for liquid for a while. Better fill our bottles up. Cold. So this basin is absolutely beautiful. I don't see anything in it, but it's a bit of a, an oasis. <laughs> and if this is indicative of the country, then I'm pretty sure that we're gonna find sheep in here. A lot of sheep sign here. 
on this ridge trail. That's good. We just climbed up here, spent a little bit of time climbing up the ridge, just super slow, glassing all the way because I needed to glass down and make sure that there wasn't anything below us. But we got up to this kind of flat spot where it's overlooking the valley and everything opened up to us. So I just picked up one ram and from this distance, it's like two and a half miles from here. He looks like a really solid sheep. It was a little bit difficult to see whether they had lamb tips or not, but good heavy ram lot drop down low so it should be really solid and then it was feeding and then it walked down out of sight two other young rams walked out and they followed it so there's at least three sheep there i don't want to do what i did last year which is be sitting on top of the sheep opening morning in their bed because we almost blew the hunt with Denise and I last year at this time by having those sheep literally put to bed hundreds of yards away from us. And I do not want to run into that again. So I think we're just going to stay here and we're going to continue to glass this valley and glass where those rams are. And if they come back out, great. If not, tomorrow morning, we'll go after them. And that appears from this distance to be a great ram and but i have to get up close and really take a look at it and make sure it's an old ram ideally and we're not going to go there tonight because i'm not going to make the same mistake three years in a row it's been about five hours since i saw the sheep disappear over the side and Originally I saw three, now I can see seven. So it's a pretty good sized band. And the one ram that I thought was really good happens to be not as big as another one that's in there. But they're in a fantastic place to see everything around, which obviously makes it challenging for us. We have to figure out a way to get after them. Hey, see you in a few hours. Greg McHale's Wild Yukon is brought to you by Vortex Optics, unlimited, unconditional lifetime warranty. PowerHunterFitness.com. Somberlin, industry leading innovation for the Western hunter. There's a reason they call this the land of the midnight sun. We are now legal hunting season and haven't seen the sheep since 7 p.m. last night. So I don't know where they are, but we just have to make sure that we get into their country and just pick it apart. And we'll find them, it's just a matter of where we find them. But pretty excited now, a lot of days. I'm out here for four days, I guess, or so, getting in here and now it's the season. We're all here, we're all excited and season six begins. It's so beautiful. Sun just coming up on the tops of the mountains now. There's no better place on the planet to be than right here, right now. We just dropped down off the top of that ridge there, making our way over toward where the sheep were. Haven't seen them in, you know, almost 12 hours now. Just gotta keep on moving. We're gonna make our way up to the top of 
this mountain here, this ridge, and then hopefully it'll open up some new ground and maybe that's where they are. Last little glimpse. I see one ram on the skyline and he's walking this way toward us. So they're up feeding right now. We're gonna drop a bunch of gear right here. This is it. We don't want to be any closer than this with our camp. So I've got to make this quick. So we're now in stocking range. I think we're about a mile or so from where they are. We're expecting rain, so we quickly threw a tent up and put all of our stuff inside it. Now it's completely just stocking mode. No more talking, just keeping our head up the whole time. And we'll see how it goes. But this is about as exciting as it gets right now. Open morning. of the mountain. 